have begun the, the live stream, so we begin with our dua. So this is dua basmala. Uh, inshallah, I'll put the text on the website so, so you have a copy of it. يا رب يا رحمن يا حنان يا منان يا ذا الجلال والإكرام يا قدوس من الناس يا ودود يا ودود ليس كمثله شيء وهو السميع البصير يا أحد يا قهار يا واسع يا جبار يا متكبر يا الله أنت الأحد ولم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد يا قابض يا باسط يا الله والله يقبض ويبسط وإليه ترجعون يا ناف يا دار يا الله إنما النجوى من الشيطان ليخ زنا الذين آمنوا وليس بدارهم شيئا إلا بإذن الله وعلى الله فليتوكل المؤمنون يا منتقم يا تواب يا الله ربنا وجعلنا مسلمين لك ومن ذريتنا أمة مسلمة لك وعرنا مناسكنا وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم يا رحمن رحمتك وسيت كل شيء يا رحمن أرجوي برحمتك يا رحمن الرحيمين يا مويز يا مدل يا رحمن وتعز من تشاء وتذل من تشاء بيدك الخير إنك على كل شيء قدير يا مغني يا مان يا رحمن الله ما في السماوات ولا بين الله هو الغني الحميد يا أيها الناس أنتم الفكراء إلى الله والله هو الغني الحميد يا رزاق يا مقيت يا رحمن من يشفع شفاءة حسنة يكون له نسيب منها ومن يشفع شفاءة سيئة يكون له كفل منها وكان الله على كل شيء مقيت وكان الله على كل شيء مقيت يا فتاح يا وحاب يا رحمن فلما ما في قلوبهم فأنزل السكينة عليهم وأثابهم فتح قريبا يا قدوس يا سمد يا ودود كل نزله روح القدس من ربك من ربك بالحق وليثبت الذين آمنوا وهدى وبشرى للمسلمين أحد يا سمد الذي لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد واستغفروا ربك ثم توبوا إليه إن ربي رحيم ودود وهو الغفور الودود ربنا إنك تحب الأفف وإنك أفون كريم تحب الأفف وأنا يا ربنا يا مولانا يا غياتنا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم من قدمنا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم من ورائنا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم من فوقنا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم من تحتنا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم عن أيماننا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم من شنائلنا نحن عدو إليك على بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا رباه يا رحمن يا الله Alhamdulillah, we thank Allah and praise Him that we have come back together after a long time, mashallah ta'ala, and that we celebrated another Eid in between, so barakallah ikum, thank you for coming, jazakumullah khair. And so we stopped last time uh, in the middle of the commentary on the Anasiri, alhamdulillah, so we'll try to finish it, inshallah, I have a few copies uh, I'll read anyway, I'll read yeah. it in English. But. So we, we completed page four, I think. Mm -hmm. So we'll start with page five. And I think in the first uh, in the first few pages, we were really talking about Aqidah, how we understand Allah and Allah's overpoweringness over everything and how everything happens by the sustainer sustaining it. So we don't think of Allah as creator and separate, we think of Allah as creator and united. Yani that, that there is one, uh, we emphasize the oneness of God in a very um, deep way, unlike many other traditions. And we talked about Qadr, wa Qadr Allah, Allah's predestination and destiny. And we finished by saying that while we know that everything is predestined, we also know that dua can change destiny. And that's a very, it's a, it's, a, it's a difficult to grasp concept. And the only way to, to understand it completely is with the heart. Because when the heart connects to divine communication, the intellect of the heart can grasp these things very easily. But the mind cannot. Because the brain intellect... Uh, 
is limited to this world. So it can't understand concepts that are beyond time and space. Because Allah is time. That's one of Allah's names. Right? So that's very hard for us to grasp. So the heart can easily understand that. Uh, but the brain struggles because for the brain, there's a past, present, future. The heart doesn't see things like that. So this is why we try in our practice to cultivate the intellect of the heart, which is a different type of intellect. Uh, so we have to keep that in mind when we, when we think about this idea that everything is written, but dua can change what is written so that there is no problem with it. Because a lot of people, they try to approach that concept with the brain only and they find a lot of problems uh, with their iman. Okay, so, so Alhamdulillah, Allah has blessed us to, to understand it easily, I think. So I'll read from uh, uh, page 5. So he says, فَلْتُفْ بِنَا فِيمَا بِهِ قَدَيْتَ وَرَدِّنَا بِمَا بِهِ رَدِيْتَ be kind to us in what you decree and let us be pleased with what pleases you. So that's a very, it's a, it's a very comprehensive dua. First of all, he's asking that you write for us what is gentle and easy. So I think, I don't know if you remember, one time we were talking about the story of how we make the Ani dua and how one sister was praying for patience. And we were all saying this is just in your heart, you know, this is a bad idea. But it's, it's. It's fairly commonly done, you know, done nowadays. People ask, make me a patient person, make me a strong person. In the old days, traditional Muslims who understood Qadr in a complete way don't make dua like that. We say, oh Allah, make everything easy. Make it gentle, make it easy. Whatever you have written for me, make it easy. Be gentle in everything. That you have written. Because if you ask for patience and this and that, Rabbana will put you through a lot of experiences that will give you patience. <laughs> but they are very tough. So it's much easier if you ask Allah to, to make make everything easy and gentle. Because our dua is based on understanding the wholeness of reality. Right? We don't separate. When you try to say, make me this, make me that, make me this, at a very deep level, there's this understanding of God is separate to me. And we say, how we understand Allah, we say Allah is in you, completely in you, and nowhere else, but at the same time, completely out of you, and nowhere else, at the same time. So this is this is difficult. This is, we don't say, oh, I am here and the divine is there. No, we say Allah is in you. Because if you say the divine is not in you, you are limiting Allah's where Allah is and we don't put any limits on Allah. But you can't say, I am Allah, astaghfirullah. <laughs> That's another problem. That's another extreme. So how do we understand this, right? So this concept of oneness or Islamic monotheism is a very deep, deep concept. And this is why Muslims, at least from the heart, we have a gut reaction. We, we will oppose anyone who breaks that Allah is one. Sometimes we don't know why we are opposing it, but we get very upset. Right? If this, this idea is, 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 is paired with okay. So he says, be kind to us in what you decree and let us be pleased with what pleases you. bima bihi radita. So that's a very beautiful verse. So whatever you are pleased for me to undergo, make me happy with that. So then you have no disquiet in your heart. Right? Whatever experiences you put me through, Make me happy with it. Because sometimes Allah will put you through experiences that are from His Jalal, meaning from His Majesty. Those are generally hard experiences. And sometimes Allah will put you through experiences that are from His Jamal, from His beauty. And those are gentle, sweet experiences. And we say your time in the dunya is going to be mixed with that. Jalal and Jamal, rigor and beauty. So whatever you decide to put me through, Make me pleased with that. It's a very comprehensive dua. So there is no, oh, why did God do this to me? No. There is a wisdom. You know it. So make me happy with that. And then I can learn from that experience and tap into that wisdom. Because both Jalal and Jamal is meant to elevate your state. In my experience, Jalal does it quicker, though it's harder. Right? Jama will also do it. 
sometimes it takes longer. So we ask Allah always to treat us with his with his gentleness. But this is a but Rabbana will put you through hardship. And the people he loves the most, he puts them through the most hardship. This is a sunnah. And the people he put through the most hardship are his prophets. Alayhim salam. So Allah subhanallah. Wa abdulillahu mahal al usri bil yusri wa budna di rehin nasri. O Allah, change the state of hardship. For ease and help us with the wind of victory. So if you see that du'a, mashallah, he doesn't. Assalamu alaikum. So we just we just began. So he doesn't say wabdilillahumma hal al usri bil yusri wamdudna bi rehin nasri. So the way the du'a is worded, it is written by someone who understands uh, Allah's rububiyah, Allah's lordship, very well because he says. Change the state of hardship, right? He's not saying um, the subtle differences, but he's basically saying rewrite, rewrite destiny, right? Because he's understanding that that Allah, though He has written things, He's able to <coughs> change also what He has written. Change the state of hardship for ease and help us with the wind of victory. Wamdudna birehin nasri. وَاجْعَلْ لَنَا عَلَىٰ بُعَاتِ غَلَبَةً وَقَسُرْ عَذَىٰ الشَّرِّ عَلَىٰ مَنْ طَلَبَةً Give us victory over the aggressors and contain the evil among those who asked for it. And that's a very beautiful dua. He doesn't, you know what he's saying? Uh, he's saying, yani, now remember this is the dua of, of the people, of the Muslims <coughs> who are opposing the, the, the colonizing forces of the French. And he's saying, whatever evil they bring to us, don't keep it within themselves, right? So if anyone is wishing you harm, uh, you say, make it rebound on them, right? I don't want to. I don't want to become a person who lets hatred enter my heart, right? So you can become angry. And you should become angry when things are wrong because otherwise you can't change things to right. But we say about the Prophet ﷺ, he got angry on behalf of his Lord, never on behalf of himself. Never. Right? So he's saying anyone wishes, so he's saying whatever harm they're bringing towards us, make it rebound on them. So he's basically saying keep my heart away from hatred. And that's a beautiful state to be in when you have to fight. So there's a very famous story about one of the companions. No, Sayyidina Ali, if I'm not mistaken, he was in battle at one point and, uh, and he was going to kill someone and that person on the battlefield made tawbah and said the shahada and he immediately didn't. Right? But there was another sahaba who had gone out on an expedition and uh, against, there were some Muslims who were camped somewhere and there was this other tribe that attacked them. So then the Prophet ﷺ sent a force to go and subdue that clan. So in this force, one of the Sahaba went and they, they, they attacked the, this tribe. And uh, one of the people there pleaded for mercy, right? But this Sahaba killed him anyway, so because he was... And when he came back to the Prophet ﷺ, he said that the Prophet was very angry, very angry. So why did you do that? If you someone pleads for mercy, you have to hold your hand. He said, I was angry. So the, the Sahaba said, I was angry, Ya Rasul. No. You fight because you have to fight, but you don't let that hatred enter your heart. Right? So when you're fighting, it is, it is to uphold the rule of law. Which is, uh, which is Allah's command upon the earth that we have to do. Uh, the Quran will say that all the time, those who enjoy the right and forbid the wrong. But you don't let yani, your inner state turn into one of hatred. Right? So this is what he's saying there. Give us victory over the aggressors and contain the evil among those who asked for it. Right? So this is, I mean, the translation is not the best. Waqsur ada sharra ala man talaba. Talaba means those who are seeking to do harm. Let their evil stay with them. So that's a good dua to make if anyone is trying to harm you. Whatever harm they're trying to do to me, let it 
Stay with them. وَكَرْ عِدَانَا يَا عَزِيزُ كَحْرَ يَفْسِمُوا حَبْلَهُمْ وَيُسْمِي الدَّحْرَ Overpower our enemy, almighty with a force which disorders them and crushes them. وَأَقْسِكْ مُرَادَهُمْ وَخَيِّبْ سَعَيَهُمْ وَحْزِمْ جُيُوشَهُمْ وَأَفْسِدْ رَعْيَهُمْ Overturn what they desire and make their efforts fail. Defeat their armies and unsettle their resorts. Look at the way he's wording that. He's not saying make my army strong and make me give... Make me go and defeat them in battle. He's basically saying whatever they are bringing to me, carry back on to them. So it's a it's a it's a it's a dua of someone who's in a very elevated state of consciousness, right? So this is the and this is better. And this is also very much in Eastern philosophies. If you study the martial arts, they talked about that the warrior mentality, that your inner state is completely calm when you go into battle and that has to be that you don't become a part of that aggression but you uphold what you have to and this is what he's saying وَأَكْسِكْ مُرَادَهُمْ وَخَيِّبْ سَعَيَهُمْ وَأَحْزِنْ جُيُوشَهُمْ وَأَفْسِدْ رَعْيَهُمْ overturn what they desire and make their efforts fail defeat their armies and unsettle their resolve وَأَجِّلَ اللَّهُ مَفِيهِمْ نِكْمَتَكْ فَإِنَّهُمْ لَا يُعْجِزْ Zuna Kudratak. O Allah, hasten your revenge among them. They cannot stand before your power. So that's a that's a powerful dua. And he is appealing to Allah by Allah's name, Al Muntaqim. That is one of the Asma al Husna. Al Muntaqim, the one who avenges. And he's saying, You are the one who will avenge whatever wrong they have done to us. That's a very powerful dua. So that's Al Muntaqim is a name of Jalal. Right? We were talking about the names of Jamal, beauty and Jalal, beauty and majesty. Al-Muntaqim is definitely a name of Jalal. So he's appealing by that. وَجَلَّهُمَ فِيهِمْ نِقْمَتَكْ فِيَنَّهُمْ لَا يُعْجِزُونَ قُدْرَتَكْ So he's basically saying, Oh Allah, you are the one who will avenge me. So he's, you are the one who will look after us. Subhanallah. Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi, bihabli ismatik, qadi atasamna O oh Lord, O oh Lord, our protection is by your love and by the might of your help. Here, ismatik is not just love, it means sort of um, a guardianship, like a very a pret- a protecting love. Uh, yeah, more like a fatherly love, the one that wants to protect from from from, from being harmed. Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi, bihabli ismatik, qadi asam... Now, O oh Lord, O oh Lord, our protection is by your love and by the might of your help. So again, acknowledging that nothing will happen except by Allah. And we were talking about that when we started on the commentary. Uh, SubhanAllah. This is the sort of dua it's very hard to refuse because he is just completely acknowledging his utter and complete dependence. In a in a way, it from a from a from a position of knowledge, not from a position of you know blind appealing, because he's basically saying, we cannot. It is it is you who will protect us, right? So that's someone who knows that who's saying that in the light of your head. Also, I don't know Ismat. You recognize that word Ismat? It used to be a common boy's name in Sri Lanka in the old days. Yeah, Ismat. Yeah, Ismat. Now you rarely hear it. You know? These words you don't hear them, so these are these are old words that come from a very a, a, a tradition that's rooted in spirituality. These are beautiful Arabic words; they're not normal, normal words. But it's it's these we don't name our children like this nowadays. Kadetasamna bi azzi nusratik, and by the might of your help. فَكُنْ لَنَا وَلَا تَكُنْ عَلَيْنَا وَلَا تَكِلْنَا تَرْفَةً إِلَيْنَا So be for us. وَكُنْ لَنَا وَلَا تَكُنْ عَلَيْنَا And do not be against us. And do not leave us to ourselves for a single instant. That's a dua the Prophet used to make. He used to say, don't leave me to myself for, the, for a single instant. We often say تَرْفَةً عَيْنَ For the blinking of an eye. Uh, but it just means like for just don't leave me to my own self. So he's saying this also. Uh, 
going back to that story of the two Sahaba and their different reactions in the battle, Sayyidina Ali, Karamallahu Ajha, never, he saw Allah in front of him at all times. So even when someone was in, the, in that heat of the battle, he could immediately forgive because he was not fighting on his behalf. He was fighting on Allah's behalf. The other Sahaba, an was not at that level. He couldn't. He was getting caught up in the in the heat of the moment. So this is why we often make that dua. Don't leave me even for the don't leave me to myself even for a moment. Because there's a great danger that I will go astray. So if you are with me at all times, I am going to be safe. فَمَا أَتَقْنَا قُوَّةً لِلْدَفْعِ وَلَسْ تَتَعَنَا خِيلَةً لِلْنَفْعِ We have no power of defense, nor have we any device to bring about our benefit. Mm-hmm. So subhanAllah, this is, this is from a position of deep truth, uh, like we spoke about before. That is, though we think it is really Allah who is the one who is helping and protecting us, right? I think we'll touch on we'll touch on this towards the end of the page. This is a place a lot of people are having modern days. There's a lot of confusion in the Muslim Ummah with uh, something called tawassul, seeking help. So we'll come to that in the end in of it. But I'll just mention here. So when we were talking about aqida and who Allah is and who we are. Uh, one of the examples we normally use for especially young children when we teach them is we say if you are sick and you go to the doctor and the doctor prescribes you medication and you take the medication and you became well, who healed you? Was it the medicine or was it Allah? Right. So the medicine is the means but the healer is Allah. Now if you think the medicine has its own inherent ability to heal extraneous of the divine will, you are in big trouble. So that's where we say we don't separate anything. Everything is by the divine will. So the medicine heals and it has the ability to heal, but it is Allah who is making that happen. So the fact that the medicine is healing and 99% of the time, say you take Panadol for a headache, 90% of the time, it goes away. Right, But the Panadol doesn't have any inherent ability to take away your headache. Allah is making it that way and we call that customary experience. He has made it customary that if you do this, this will happen. So the natural laws, the laws of physics and chemistry are what we call customary experience. But Allah is Allah, so any moment he can change that. If he wants to, he will change it. So customary experience, if you try to walk on water, you will sink. <laughs> but Isa alayhi salam, he changed it. He said, no, you walk on water, you won't sink. So we call that karama, Allah's nobility. So karama is often translated as a miracle. So Rabbana can change customary experience at any time and whenever he wants to. We don't deny that. But just because we see something as customary experience, we mustn't go into the uh, idea that that has inherent power because that is very dangerous. And that is where that hidden shirk kicks in. That there is some sort of partnership that you are having in your heart without even knowing it. So this is going to higher levels, right? So I'll come back to why I said that later on. So here he, he acknowledges that we have no power of defense. It doesn't mean he's sitting in a room making dhikr and not going to have his swords and things and go out to fight. No, he's probably in the battlefield thinking this, that I can't. This power is from you, right? And sometimes people of a lot of dhikr make this mistake. They do all of that, but they don't go out and engage. So the idea is you engage, but while you're engaging with the world, you don't for one moment think that there is any other doer but Allah. Right? That is the understanding of Islamic monotheism, which is, is very deep understanding. So we have no power of defense, nor have we any device to bring about our benefit. وَمَا قَصَدْنَا غَيْرَ بَابِكَ الْكَرِيمِ وَمَا رَجَعَنَا غَيْرَ فَضْلِكَ الْعَمِيمِ 
we do not aim for other than your noble door and we do not hope for other than your encompassing bounty. So he is reminding and Rabbana there is, is in no need of remem, remem, being reminded but we are in need of reminding ourselves. So he is reminding himself that we do not aim for other than your noble door. Right? That uh, our aim is to get close to you. Babikal Karim. And the, the wording is very beautiful because if you if you appeal to Allah to help you through al Bab al Karim, the Bab al Karim, the door of nobility, uh, you are opening you are opening for Allah to help you in any which way He wants to, including by miraculous help, because karama is the root word of karama means miracle. It comes from that same root. Karim, to be noble, generous. And Allah is al Karim, very noble. So we appeal to Allah by your nobility. And you do as you wish. So, subhanAllah. We do not hope for other than your encompassing bounty. So, again, he is not saying, Give me victory over so and so in this battle with that one. He is going straight to the source and saying, you, out of what you consider noble and bounteous, bless us. So how can Allah say no? SubhanAllah. Mm. Minds only hope for your blessing by the simple fact that you say be and it is. So he's saying, SubhanAllah. All you have to do to change everything is just say kun. And tayakun. And so it is. So that's a deep, deep uh, understanding of reality and how things can change. And not giving up on that. That we keep asking, keep asking. Rabbana will change things in ways that are unimaginable. And sometimes when you allow your life to be regulated by that force, uh, the beauty that comes is more than what you could have brought into your life had you thought about what you want. So sometimes say, Ya Rabbi, you do for me what you think is good. It's going to be far better than anything I think is good. So uh, life becomes a very, um, you know, a very beautiful adventure. You know, people, especially this culture, young people are thrill seekers. So sometimes to young people, I say, this is a better way to live. You'll be surprised what Rabbana will bring your way, you know, subhanAllah. Rahum salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin. Alhamdulillah, salam, amin, salam, tabarakat, yad al-jalaikum. So he says, Binafsika ma taqulu kun yakun. Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi, bika tawassulu, lima ladayka wa bika tawassulu. O Lord, O Lord, arrival is by you. So wasala with the saad, tawassulu, to what you have and seeking the means is by you. Lima ladayka, lima ladayka means arriving to what is in your hand. So in, a, in really what, what Allah possesses. Wabika tawassulu, and then tawas, tawassul is seeking the means. And here there is a big current point of contention in the Muslim Ummah because many people will say when you say when you, when you say tawassul they find that problematic because they'll say tawassul is not allowed uh, and what they mean specifically is seeking the means by the help of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or the, or the anbiya Allah alayhi wa sallam or the awliya Allah uh, rahimahullah alayhum so uh, the, 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 the problem is in that understanding of aqidah. It's going back to that, uh, uh, what do you call that, example of the medicine and the, and the healer, right? If you think the Panadol has any inherent ability to heal you, you have made shirk and you have to make tawbah because shirk is the one sin Allah will not forgive. Everything else forgiven, shirk, no. The Panadol has no inherent ability of its own. It is not self-subsisting. Only Allah is the self-subsisting. That's Al-Qayyum. 
It's a deep understanding of that name. It is doing what it is meant to do and how Allah created it to function by the agency of the Lord. So the same thing, you may ask such and such a one to help you, but if you for a moment think that they have in, in any inherent ability to help you extraneous or out of the bounds of Allah's control, you have made shirk. So many Muslims get this wrong. So they say, oh, if you pray to so-and-so to help you, or if you ask so and you are making shirk. No, you are only making shirk if you think they have any ability to help you. So praying to someone and someone, help me like this, like this, is wrong if you think they have any godliness. Astaghfirullah, that's a great sin. So Imam Busairi in Qasida Burda, there's a lovely line there where he says, for because the whole of Qasida Burda is praising Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And by praising Muhammad, who is Habibullah, the only, only creation given the title, the beloved of God, by praising Muhammad, Allah becomes very happy with you. Because any of you know, when you love someone deeply and someone else is praising the one you love, you become very happy with this person. And of, of course, Allah, who is Allah, and there's no other Allah but Allah, if he calls somebody Habibullah, he knows exactly why he's doing it. And it is up to us to understand what that means. Uh, so when we make Qasida Burda, and we have a lot of healing from Qasida Burda in our experience, we pray, we have, by praising Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a lot of blessing from Allah flows to us. Right? So Imam Busairi, in that Qasida, he says, we praise Muhammad by every way we can think of, but we do not do what the Christians did. What did the Christians do? They praised Isa alayhi salam to the extent they called him divine. We say no. We will praise Muhammad as much as we can imagine and think of. And if you read the Dalal Khairat and the way the uh, teachers of before used to praise Muhammad, as subhanallah, unbelievable poetry right? but we don't call him God God is Allah la ilaha illallah so we don't make that mistake so many people who don't understand this in a sort of a, in a foundational way say that if you are making qasaid etc etc you are making shirk so hasha may Allah protect us from such a calamity we don't do that but we recognize, for sure, we recognize the great state of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, all the prophets, alayhi wa sallam, and the awliyaullah, rahimahullah alayhi That is from my experience. Also, from the Quran, because Allah says, Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. He has, says, verily, he doesn't just say, I do. Verily, Allah and his angels uh, uh, send Send salawat, send salutations upon Muhammad. Ya yuhaladina amanu sallu alayhim wa sallimu taslima. And a command, O you who believe. He doesn't say, O you Muslims, O you who have iman, higher state, right? Muslim, mu'min, muhsin. You also send your salutations upon him. So that's a command. If Allah says, I and my angels are praising this man, you praise him. I don't think it's up to any of us to say no. So there is something there we don't understand. Maybe understand and maybe see and maybe experience, then everything will become clear. But subhanAllah, it's a great means of arriving to the divine presence. And this is why we say, it's also how beautiful Arabic, wasala, tawasul, they're just a, two letters different. Arriving to Allah is by this means of Muhammad. We say one of the greatest doors to coming close to Allah is through Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's the best of teachers and he was sent for that purpose. And we say the, if we also say Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a city, you know the old cities had walls. The door, the gate for the city is Ali, karamallahu asha. We say Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the Medina, is the city. Uh, uh, Al-Babuha, the gate of the Medina is Ali. Sayyidina Ali, karamallahu wa So if you ever read any of what Sayyidina Ali has written, he's a great poet, absolutely stunning, his, his understanding of God and his understanding of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Subhanallah. So he's saying that here. So I just wanted to, I think I just wanted to emphasize that 
today because this is a problem, Yani. It has caused a lot of people, especially, unfortunately, Muslims of today, to leave the old ways with the accusation of shirk, especially when it comes to the awliya Allah and uh, visiting their maqam, etc. Visiting their maqam is paying respect. It is like if your parents have passed away. I mean, if I go to Sri Lanka, I try my best to visit mommy's grave. That is, that is, I mean, in fact, I mean, of course, they, I won't talk about the issues I have with the, never mind, the authorities of the, of the Masajid. That's another issue. But, you know, when you, if you can visit, in the Prophet, Alayhi used to say, visit the graveyard often. Go and visit. Go and remember the dead. People who have been in your life and have entered death, if you stop remembering them, we say remembering is the greatest uh, sign of love. No? So if you, if you love someone, you'll never forget them. <coughs> and the Prophet used to say, go and visit often. The Prophet والسلام, who lost Sayyidina Khadija, anha, though he was a Prophet and for sure he knows he'll be reunited with her, anytime he used to see anything that reminded him of her, he would start tearing, you know, once his daughter, I forget her name, one of his daughters, I forget which one, maybe Umu Kulthum, I can't remember. She was married to uh, a man who, he, 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 he was, uh, he didn't believe in the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at the time of Mecca. So when the Rasul Alaihi Wasallam emigrated, so his own daughter and son-in-law, son-in-law was kafir didn't want to come. I can't remember if he later became Muslim. Uh, but he was captured. The son-in-law was captured in battle. You know, this is a very difficult situation. The Prophet's own son-in-law was captured from the army. So his daughter, who was still in Mecca, and she stayed with her husband, she wanted to ransom him. So she sent to the Prophet وسلم, some of the jewelry that her mother, Say Sayyidatina Khadija, had given her, had gifted her. He sent, she sent it to the Prophet Alaihissalam to ransom her husband. Right now, though he is the Prophet and these are his children, he is still the leader of the Muslims, so he can't treat anyone in any different way. But a ransom is acceptable. But when he saw their jewelry, he let him go. But he started tearing immediately because this is his own wife's jewelry. So he remembered, he remembered their time together. Uh, so why did I talk about that? Ah, no. So remembering the graveyard, the graveyards. I mean, see, anyway, visiting those who are dead is something very much. Is a, is a is a very. I don't know. I think it's a very beautiful habit that you go to graveyards. You remember people who have gone. You pay your respect. You go and recite for them. So of the people we love and we respect and and we are grateful for the most, of course, after our parents or our teachers, and of our teachers, our religious teachers. And of those, the awliya Allah, the best of them, because we don't have the anbiya Allah amongst us. If we had them, subhanallah, this world would be a different place. So to visit their grave sites, and the grave sites of the anbiya Allah, you can visit the grave site of a prophet, subhanallah. Right? That's why we go to the Rawda Sharif, but any of the prophets, alayhum salam, you don't go there to worship them. You go there to pay your respects, to pray for them, like you would pray for your parents. These things Allah is watching and, and they're a mark of very good character and certainly things Allah would be very pleased with. So this is why traditionally our ancestors used to do all of that and they were very strong in their iman. But unfortunately in the colonial period the uh, understanding of aqidah and our religious education became very weak. So we didn't understand who Allah is in a deep way. And then all these ideas that, oh, this is shirk, you're doing that, they began to play with our minds and we are losing our connection. But it's the same thing. If you believe medicine and doctors have the inherent ability to heal, you have made shirk just as much as if you believe you pray to an awliya and they heal you that they are God, that's shirk too. They will be the first to run away from that. But they are means. They are certainly healers and helpers who have our understanding uh, 
the same in a in a in a way that the same way other people have with knowledge of from the mulk right so it's a bit sad these days this has become a big problem so i thought i would uh, address that especially since uh, um this is being live streamed mm. so he says uh, arrival is by you to what you have and seeking the means is by you and he says ya rabbi anta ruknuna rafi'u ya rabbi anta husnuna maniyu o lord you are a high pillar of support o lord you are an impregnable fortress ya rabbi ya rabbi anilna al amna idar tah tahalna wa ida aqamna o lord o lord give us security when we travel and when we remain so this is we'll we'll read through this this is this is more easy ya rabbi wahfad zar'ana wa dar'ana wa fad tijarana wa wafir jama'ana o lord preserve our crops and our herds and preserve our trade and make our numbers more wajal biladana bilad ad-dini wa rahat al-muhtaji wal miskini make our land a land of the deen a repose for the needy and the poor وَاجْعَلْ لَهَا بَيْنَ الْبِلَادِ السَّوْلَةَ وَحُرْمَةً وَمَنْعَةً وَدَوْلَةً Give us force among the lands as well as respect, impregnability and a polity. So he's praying for a deen of Islam. وَاجْعَلْ مِنَ السِّرِّ الْمَسُونِ عِزَّهَا وَاجْعَلْ مِنَ السِّرِّ الْجَمِيلِ هِزْ هِرْزَهَا Appoint it, its might from the protected secret, and granted protection by the beautiful veiling i think these are these are lines written by someone who knows very deep truths waj'al min as-sirri al-masuni izzaha waj'al min as-sitri al-jamili hirzaha appoint it its might from the protected secret masuni izzaha uh hmm um this is talking about deeper secrets of the Quran and he's saying appoint the might of the state this bilad ad-deen a place where the needy and the poor will find refuge and repose appoint its protection from from a deep secret of uh, uh creation waj'al min as-sitri al-jamili his hirzaha and um and granted protection by the beautiful veiling we won't talk about that now but those are more deep, deeper things waj'al bi sadin wa bi qafin wa bi noon alf hijab min waraiha yakun by sad qaf and noon place a thousand veils in front of it mm. so now onwards the last third of this dua he is going into very deep spiritual realities uh but inshallah maybe the next time we will we will start going into because maghrib has come in and it's 8:20 uh, now so we should leave some time for questions but these ones the rest of these ayat he is going into now he has made his dua right first by acknowledging who allah is if you go back and read this as a refresher before next week inshallah if allah blesses us to come together again Uh, by reminding himself who Allah is, who He is, and then uh, Subhanallah, asking that whatever evil is brought towards them be contained among those who wish for it, so not retaliating, right? Keeping his heart very clear from that, then describing what he wants to see as a bilad, the bilad din al Islam, a land of is the din of Islam. It's a very beautiful to keep everything safe, our crops safe, our trade safe, a place where the poor and the needy will find refuge and repose and to protect it. And then the rest of this dua, he's going by this, by this, by this, by this, by this. So these are deeper spiritual realities. And I think there are some things we should talk about because they should become known. Inshallah. I think we should bring this knowledge back slowly, slowly, uh, so people become more aware of our more deeper spiritual strength. Because uh, in in 
because without it we become just another just another tradition right but uh, the 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 heart of this tradition is the connection to the divine and once that connection is strong the tradition becomes all encompassing and so you will see that same strength in other traditions that have that connection so we are I, at least from my experience we are, we are sort of in a state where we are stumbling around like a blind person in a dark room not really knowing who we are as a people because we have lost that connection so he talks about this um, and i think it's important i mean this is one of the reasons i chose this to cover it deeply so inshallah next week we will go into that because these are deeper spiritual realities that he talks about and also he's making dua he's saying by this by this by this by this be so this is tawassul i am seeking your help by the means of this and this and this and this right so he's asking allah in a way that abana cannot refuse so um so we have some time for questions Are there, are there <coughs> Muslims or others who seek that kind of help from kind of spiritual people who are also non-Muslims? I know of non-Muslims who seek spiritual help from Muslims who are connected. Actually in Sri Lanka I've had first-hand experience of Sinhalese people who will go to Muslims who have a strong connection but are hidden. They are not famous, nobody knows about them. They are very, very pious. And they'll go and say, recite this for me, give me this to drink, help me in some illness. And generally they are cured by that. So I know of that. And so actually, Sai Baba and so on. Sai Baba, I don't know of Muslims who go to them. I've never heard of Muslims who go to them. I don't know if they are there. It's in our tradition we say, other people from other traditions who are spiritual. Our opinion is that the deen of Muhammad وسلم, is the most recent, hence the least, well, it's fresher, it's the most fresh, like the freshest fruit, <laughs> plucked closest, <laughs> most recently. Also, we acknowledge in, a, in, in the Rasul Alaihissalam also taught us that many other deens, though they began like this over, over the ages, and because it was not under the same divine protection, had a lot of admixture, right? A lot of contamination and corruption. So our opinion is that if you're going to seek spiritual help, seek it from a Muslim. Right? Someone who is really, it will be far better than in any, any of the other traditions. And also among Muslims, this also should be mentioned, there are many who begin on that spiritual path, but especially if they go without a guide, they can get easily misled and easily get into trouble. Uh, because one of the first things that will happen when you start a spiritual journey in a, in a serious way, because remember, Rasulullah also had a guide when he went on the Mi'raj, he didn't go alone. Allah sent Sayyidina Jibreel, Sayyidina Jibreel Islam was his teacher, right? And he said about Rasulullah and Sayyidina Jibreel was taking him up through the seven heavens. All of beauty in all of creation was showed to him on his right. And all of ugliness in all of creation was shown to him on his left. But he never let his gaze move this way or that way. He kept it, I am going to Allah. And it is said, had he turned his head for an instant, 
he would have become, um, what's the word, distracted and he would have been torn away. He wouldn't have made it. So we also say when you are going on a spiritual path, you have to keep your focus and many things will come at you. Things from beauty and things from ugliness and you can't let it sway your focus. You have to go to Allah. Once you get to Allah, then you come and can come and deal with these things. But on your way, if you you can get distracted. Um, so we say we say that. So, but he also had a teacher. So people who try to enter that path without a teacher very often go astray and they don't know it. They can fall into trouble. Because one of the first things is your you have to journey through the malakut, and yeah, the mulk is hard enough to deal with. So dealing with the malakut is harder. So sometimes people who don't go with a teacher, uh, they can get into a lot of trouble. And then, of course, one of the first things you will encounter is uh, the other types of creation. So the jinn right, uh, is one of the first things you will encounter. So if you don't know how to deal with that, you can just get stuck there and not go beyond that realm because you have to go through these realms. Uh, and so a lot of Muslims uh, that we know, they get stuck there and then they start dealing in things like uh, using the jinn for their health and this and that and that and this and then black magic comes from that. People with a bad intention because, oh, now I have an ability, I tap into power from the malakut so I can do bad things with that. So it's a, it's a different type of, different set of problems. So there are people who get into that, and that's very dangerous. And then there are other Muslims, unfortunately, who don't have a deeper knowledge or access to deeper or properly trained mashaikh, who will go to those Muslims and say they can do this and this to help me. Uh, and then you can get into trouble. So there has been a lot of wrongdoing, that type of wrongdoing, in our, in our traditional societies. And that's another reason I think Muslims have moved away from the more spiritual path, which is understandable. So, generally we say if you're going to seek spiritual help, go to, if you're a Muslim, go to a Muslim, because they will have the best and the freshest and the least corrupted knowledge, because it's Allah's promise to Muhammad وسلم, that he will, and to us, not just to Muhammad, to everyone who came after Muhammad, that I won't let this deen become corrupted. And that's why we have the Quran. It's an amazing miracle to have a book that is, I mean, even any, even if you read Jane Austen 200 years ago, how many different editions? Every edition has different wording. It's just not the same as what she wrote. Right? So the same with other books in our tradition. Other texts are not, they don't have the status that the Quran has of divine protection. So you have to be very careful when you read. So when you're going, it's best to go to a Muslim. Unfortunately, these people are hard to find. Yes. So you have to really search. And, and and this is part of the sunnah. We say that what is precious, Allah hides. Uh, diamonds are hidden. Gold is hidden. Everything precious is hidden. So people of deep, deep spiritual awareness, Allah will hide them. Until and unless he wants to expose them, he may also do that. Because Rabbana is not bound by any law. <laughs> he does as he wills. But you have to seek. And we also say for seekers, you have to keep seeking and you will, but you will never find. Seek and you will never find, but you will be found. So that's also a, a, a bit of a riddle. But what it means is that you must keep seeking, but don't ever think that you're going to find. If you think you're going to find, you're making a mistake in Aqidah you will be found, right? You show Allah that you're sincere and you demonstrate your sincerity by your seeking and know that Allah will reward your sincerity by finding you. But don't go seeking saying, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm the one who's going to solve this. That's dangerous because then your ego, your nafs is taking over. And when the ego takes <clears throat> over, that's what happened to Iblis. He became shaitan, right? We say about Iblis, there was not an inch of the earth where his forehead did not touch in sujood. He was such a great worshipper of God, Iblis, the king of the jinn. And the jinn used to live on earth before the human beings came. 
he was such a great worshipper that Allah elevated him to where the to paradise to the rank of the malaika. He could go and come freely. But he did that out of pride, I am a great worshipper. So when Allah created Sayyidina Adam and said, No, you bow down to Adam, he couldn't do it. Because he could it was not out of love for Allah, it was I am such and such, I am your greatest this and this. So when Allah says, now I want you to, I can't do it. So this is why we say, seek, but don't think you will find, you will be found. So that's another danger on the spiritual path, that nafs, this ego, keeps coming back, you know. Whether you're in the mulk or the malakut or wherever it is, overcoming the ego is, is the hardest thing. Subhanallah. But may Allah bless us, I think, to have more people like that amongst us who are truly guided and proper mashaik. Because anyone who has um, sat in their presence, you don't need to say anything. What you feel is enough. I don't need to explain all of this and have all these classes. <laughs> so may Allah bless us to be in their presence. And the ones we have today are but a very, very faint shadow of the ones who used to be before, because we are just getting more and more diluted. So imagine then sitting with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Anything else? No? So we'll finish then. We should pray my prayer. So I'll read uh, from the Dua of the Greeting, Dua of Salaam, and uh, I will put the text of this also on the website, inshallah. We begin in the name of the one, the only, the absolute, the all, the one who sustains but is not sustained, the one who creates but is not created, the one who is the origin of all, the all-powerful, in front of whom there is no other power, the all-able, in front of whom there is no other ability, the all-seeing, the all-hearing, the watchful over, the intimately near, the sublime, the apparent, the hidden, the only reality, truth transcendent, truth apparent, truth manifest, truth that cannot be denied, truth known even if unacknowledged, truth that pours out of acknowledgement, the reality of all, the true state of being and all else is mirage and the true state of existence and all else is fancy. The beloved of all who believe, the saviour of all who are saved, the guide of all of those who wander, the one from whom we came, the one we return to, the one to whom we belong. A true breath that gives us life, our Lord, the eternal everlasting one, we raise our hands to you and we implore, we implore and we raise the mention of your beloved, our liege lord, our saviour, our master, our guide, the perfected one, the chosen one, the one whose true essence only you comprehend, O truth, the one whose light only you can truly see, O light, the one whose mercy is a breath of your divine mercy, Ya Rahman, the seal of the noble body of prophets, the leader of the noble messengers, the foremost knower of you, the greatest one among those conscious of you, the beloved of you and our beloved. Send upon him, his noble family, his blessed companions, his friends and brethren, all those who love and obey and follow him for all time. Send your special blessings, salutations, peace and noblest greetings upon them and upon us all for all time. And let your greeting upon them, our Lord, be the seal of your mercy, the emblem of your protection, the guard and the armor, the ennobling robes of light that clothes, adorn and distinguishes us upon the earth and the grave. And in our resurrection, the light that carries us over the bridge as swift as lightning, and the light with which we are cleansed and made beautiful, so we may present ourselves to you, O our Lord, without shame, but in modesty. And by the light and strength and blessing of your greeting, our Lord, we may dare to be in your majestic and beautiful presence. O Allah, by the light of this greeting, we ask you to vanquish our enemies with a complete vanquishment. O Allah, by the light of this greeting, we ask you to obliterate every obstacle they place in our path to please you by our good deeds. O Allah, by the light of this greeting, we ask that you open every door of nearness to you. O Allah, by the light of this greeting, keep us safe from loss, from grief, from wastefulness, from filth, from impure relations and from fear. 
We feel only you, O oh our Lord, and all our hope is in you, O oh our Lord. By the light of this greeting, remove the veils that blind us from the light and strength and protection of truth. From knowing truth as truth and falsehood as falsehood, O oh Allah, by the light of this greeting, give us the ability to stay away from what is false and enable us to advance on what is good. Allahumma bi nuri salamatak irfa'ana, Allahumma bi nuri salamatak irfa'ana, Allahumma bi nuri salamatak irfa'ana, O Allah, by the light of your greeting, cause our ascension, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahman. And join us, O our Lord, as long as we remain here in the dunya and in our time in the barzakh, and after that, to the companionship, the intimate companionship by which all our loneliness is banished and by which we are gladdened, of those you have sent and established your eternal greeting upon the most noble elevated company. Mm. Alhamdulillah. <coughs> 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 